Nick is the Labour MP for Aberavon and for the party adopting the full anti-Semitism definition, you must, Stephen, be very pleased indeed. This is a real step in the right direction, yes, absolutely. And um, I think, you know, it's been uh, incredibly hard to get to this point, far harder than it should have been. Uh, but I also wonder a little bit about the the additional clarification that's been added on. It says, you know, that uh, criticising the Israeli government should not be seen in any, any way as being anti Semitic, and that, that's absolutely right. But, but it, it doesn't doesn't already say mm. that in the IHRI definition, so I don't really know why that's been added. And it just, you know, the word, word the words are important, but there's also a really big sort of symbolic uh, mm. point here, which is we do need to listen to and understand what the Jewish community is telling us, and they've told us the IHRA definition and the examples: no ifs, no buts. That's all you need. So, so why, I'm a little bit baffled why we why they yeah. added that extra sentence. Stephen, I, I, do, I don't understand why this problem has been made for itself, because the big problem is that a number of uh, uh, what are being dubbed in the press, probably wrongly, extreme left-wingers in the Labour Party, of which there now seem to be quite a lot in control, uh, they seem to feel that it, they are going to be branded anti-Semitic if they criticise Israel's government and that has never been the case everybody is permitted to and quite a lot of Israelis themselves uh, and Jews from all over the world criticize the government yeah so I don't yeah, understand I... what this is all about and why they've got they've gone about putting this uh, free speech protection clause in uh, I think that the reason the IHRA definition exists is because there have often been cases where people have allowed their criticism of Israel to spill over into anti-Semitic tropes about Jews in general. And that's why the definition is very important. It's why that we, we must never allow ourselves uh, to, to fall into that trap. And I think that the reality is that uh, there have been a number of people on the hard left, some of whom have, have either rejoined or joined the party in recent years, who do allow that to happen. Mm. And I think, you know, what we've seen, of course, uh, Jeremy is, is a passionate campaigner for Palestinian rights, as am I. I'm a vocal and active member of Labour Friends of Palestine. I've been down there. First time I went down to Palestine was in the 1990s, actually, working for the British Council. We were supporting the establishment of the Palestinian National Authority. I am outraged by the actions of the Israeli government violating the human and economic and political rights of of Palestinian millions of Palestinians every day, and you've but never I've been never accused of anti-Semitism, no, have you? No, no. And no. I speak out at every opportunity I get in Parliament, and I've never felt that the IHRA definition in any way constrained me or prevented me from that criticism. But some let me put this to you: criticism does spill yeah. over let into anti-Semitic statements. You're absolutely right, and some of the people um, who make these uh, uh, over dramatic, if you like. Uh, criticisms of Israel, they go too far. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they're just a bit ignorant, some of these people. Some of these extremely left-wing people who've now seem to have infiltrated the Labour Party don't seem to be the brightest in the box. <laughs> that, that may be the case, and I, I just don't know, uh, you know, I don't know who these people are. I occasionally get trolled by them on Twitter and I, you know, I love the mute button on Twitter. It's great to just uh, turn them off, and, and I do that on a fairly regular basis. Never block but, them, Stephen. Never no, block, don't block them. them. Then they just, see that, yeah. that you've blocked them, and just then they, they just uh, yeah. come back in another incarnation. So yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know what I, I think that, um, for example, sometimes you know this it gets sort of spilled over that people say, oh well, uh, such and such a person actually has more sympathy with Israel than they yeah. do with the United Kingdom, even though that person is, was, was born here and is... Well, they say they don't get English generation. irony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. That, that, I think, is, is very, very dangerous and anti-Semitic territory to get into because, you know, we would never say that. Uh, if you said that about a black person or whatever it was, you would be rightly accused of racism. So If you said I it about a Welsh person, you'd probably be accused yeah. of racism now. Steve. But in order to move on, haven't you got to, you know, it's good to accept the IHRA, but hasn't Corbyn got to go as well? 
look, look, I mean, he's now, it's a big step in the right direction, what's uh, happened today. Um, you know, the, lab, the, the party conference speech that he makes in a couple of weeks in, in Liverpool, I think is going to be one of the most important by a leader in the modern history of the Labour Party. He's got to get the tone and the content right. He's got to distance himself from these hard left conspiracy theories. He won't do that. I mean, I don't think he's not done it so far. Why would he do it then, Stephen? I don't think he's going to do it. Well, you've seen there's been a journey on this. I mean, somewhat kicking and screaming, but we've got there <laughs> almost with this high HRA stuff. We've got, um, we've, I'm really sorry about this. I'm just being asked by somebody because I'm just and going into a building. I'm just going up. To yeah, sorry about this, guys. You're in demand, Stephen, and there is no no need to apologise at all. Can I, can I listen just because it's going to get a bit difficult? And I know you've got something else to. Can I just ask you quickly? How worried are you? Um, because I've spoken to a lot of uh, Labour MPs who uh, are not big Jeremy Corbyn fans. They're not worried, but they're concerned that they may be deselected by their uh, local parties if they're not supporting Jeremy Kinnock because of the uh, now Corbyn. The, Corbyn, did I say you Kinnock? said Jeremy Kinnock? Oh, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> I've had a terrible problem with names all day today. <laughs> it's um, been a long day. It has. I, I, I'm, I wonder if you're concerned as well, particularly now that the NEC has changed quite dramatically in the people who are on the uh, national executive. Look, you know, you don't go into politics um, and constantly look over your shoulder uh, as to what people who disagree with you may or may not do. You've just got to stand up for your values and your principles. And no one person is bigger than the party. And our job as MPs is to protect the reputation of our party mm. and to make sure that we're a party to, that deserves and earns the trust of the British people. And that is our job. That's what we've got to do. And that means you sometimes got to stand up for what you believe in and say what you think. So and if people want to go ahead and create internecine warfare in the party as a result of that, well, fine. But I think we've always been a broad church. Jeremy spent 30 years on the backbench just being extremely critical mm. of every single leader that there was. And, and I think all the, a lot of us are doing is doing what he did. He stood up for his principles and for what he believed in. But he and his followers in the party don't seem to like it. And I just wondered whether that was worrying you slightly or whether you thought that maybe in the future uh, a new party uh, of the centre-left is something that you would join. The Labour Party for me is it's the greatest force of good for good in the history of British politics and it would be a terrible travesty if we allowed it to become something else and I'm certainly not prepared uh, to be any part of that I, I believe strongly that there's a huge demand in the country for a mainstream Labour Party that yes has radical uh, Keynesian economics at its heart but is also a patriotic party mm. that isn't driven by these bizarre conspiracy theories is actually talking about what people on the doorstep really care about day in day out and we're right. standing up for those people and that, that's what we have to that's what we are and that's what we always have to be all right Stephen, i know i've got to let you go just one last question tomorrow's shadow cabinet agenda doesn't have i'm surprised a specific item for addressing the anti-semitism scandal why isn't the shadow cabinet discussing it i find that disappointing then i didn't know that actually I, I think they should have had an emergency meeting with the shadow cabinet over the summer to deal with this crisis um, and it's disappointing that it's not being addressed tomorrow um, we've always, of course got the the vote and the parliamentary Labour Party voting tomorrow uh, as far as I know that vote is still going ahead so I think it'd be very good if the shadow cabinet were able to meet tomorrow and, and share with us the rest of the, the parliamentary Labour Party their views on on the NEC decision uh, it's disappointing. What, right. what more can I say? Uh, we need to take this issue really seriously. Stephen, talk again. Thank you very much indeed for your time. I know you're busy tonight. Stephen Kinnock, the Labour MP for Abravan.